Live from downtown Detroit, Local 4 News at 5 starts now. We begin with the attraction that has turned into a viral sensation. Belle Isle's giant slide reopens amid somehow worldwide attention. As you can expect, heading into one of the last big summer weekends, it's going to be packed. And when we say worldwide attention, we mean it. That's right. That's because media outlets have been all over this story. We're talking about headlines on CNN. The Wall Street Journal is on it. Even Sky News in the UK published a story about it. A TikTok video from just today at the giant slide has now been viewed over a half a million times already. Also, the Today Show was there this morning to take a ride live. Let's get to Priya Mann live on Belle Isle tonight. Priya, uh, we're laughing about it. There were real concerns that somebody could get seriously hurt. Yeah, you're right, Devin and Kimberly. I mean, those videos racked up millions of views, but when you're going airborne like that, you run the risk of getting seriously injured when you hit every bump along the way of this giant slide. We're giving you a bird's eye view. Just take a look at the live truck, how tiny it looks when you're up here. The DNR was spraying the slide periodically throughout the day with water to increase the friction and sort of slow riders down. They were also giving some great advice as folks took their chances on the giant slide. Lean forward at all times and you can go. DNR workers were busy reminding riders how to stay safe on the giant slide. Two words, giant slide. Some took the scenic route, while others <laughs> might feel it tomorrow. Oh, we <laughs> it was terrifying, but it was awesome. I, I heard some groans. There were some groans. There were some, there were some pops and snaps in the body too, but it was very fun. It was invigorating and exciting. The giant slide, of course, went viral after videos like this racked up millions of views. <laughs> Our beautiful Belle Isle even getting a shout out on the Today Show. There are people being flung into the air. Uh... <laughs> after closing last weekend due to speed concerns, eager riders were lined up early for the giant slide's reopening Friday morning. Hey, how was the ride? I don't know why I always go fast, but it was fun. Just follow the safety instructions. We give it a several times through the way you lean forward and you hold on to the bag that's really all you got to do of course you know i had to give it a try fellow adrenaline junkies ashanti and darlene went down with me two three let's go oh my God! Stomach, but it was amazing. It brought me back to some solid. We are dream team here. We did this. Yeah, dream team for sure. You know, uh, Darlene and Ashanti and I were talking about just climbing the stairs kind of helps calm your nerves because, boy, this is a workout in and of itself. The giant slide, of course, is going to be open from 11 to 3 uh, Friday through Sunday through Labor Day. So there was a bit of a, a lineup of folks who wanted to come later this afternoon. Of course, the slide is now closed. Uh, so again, 11 to 3 Friday through Sunday through Labor Day. So if you didn't get a chance today, this weekend is certainly going to be packed. And coming up at 6 o'clock, you know, the slide was built in the 60s. We're going to be talking to some of those seasoned pros. We had some grandparents riding the slide today and boy uh, I, I coined a phrase it was a slide down memory lane we're born on Belle Isle I'm Love Korea it. man local Love four it. and you piloted your flight <laughs> better right. than a lot of other people that we've seen you so congr uh, yeah we're, are you are you eager to do it again <laughs> or have you had enough Oh, 100%, 100%, you know, and you, you lean forward, it does work, then a part of you just kind of wants to lean back a little bit, but you got to follow the advice of our DNR pros. That sounded right. Oh, yeah. well, All that's right, great. Priya. That's awesome. Well, ahead at 530, there's one ride you haven't seen today that you're not going to want to miss. We'll have more on that in just a minute, but let's get a look at the weather as we head toward the weekend. Yeah, let's get over to Kim Adams. Uh, Kim, it's been kind of cloudy for most of the day. <laughs> it, it was, but now we're getting some sunshine and we'll get some heat in here by the second half of the weekend. Remember those days with the giant slides when the sun bakes down on it and then you get burned? Your least of your concerns was going airborne. Uh, we've got nice clear skies out there right now for most of the viewing area. Unless you're down in Monroe, you still have about another hour before we can get those clouds out of there. But otherwise, it is a nice evening here in Metro Detroit. Because of the clouds, we kept our temperatures in the upper 70s to right around 80 degrees at City Airport, 78 in Mount Clemens, mid 70s in Pontiac. Could even go up another degree or so in the next hour with the help of that sunshine, but otherwise, it's going to be a nice, pleasant evening. 
clearing skies. Any clouds that we have will be gone by, I would say, 8 or 9 o'clock tonight, leaving us with mostly clear skies. It will cool down to the low 60s tonight. But as I said, a warm up ahead for the weekend, especially the second half of the weekend and into next week. Your 4-1 forecast is straight ahead. All right, well, here it is, the 36-page affidavit detailing the classified documents stored at former President Trump's Mar-a-Lago estate. But there is a problem. Most of the affidavit is heavily redacted, leaving as many questions as there are answers. The 36-page document is highly redacted, but we're learning new information about what led to the unprecedented search of former President Trump's Florida estate known as Mar-a-Lago. The affidavit says the Department of Justice believed highly sensitive national security information was being kept there improperly. We're dealing with the most sensitive information. The hair on the back of my neck stood up when I mm. saw those classification markings referenced here. The Justice Department got involved after an initial set of documents was recovered from Mar-a-Lago in January. The DOJ says those documents included several categories of sensitive information, including some of the most closely held secrets in the U.S. government. Agents suspected more were being stored at the property and that if they searched it, they would find evidence of obstruction. That should be a sobering moment for all of us to realize that we're in this situation with former President Trump. The FBI did eventually search Mar-a-Lago on August 8th. And during the search, FBI agents seized 11 sets of classified documents, some marked top secret but much remains unknown. Major redactions were made at the request of the Justice Department, which argued successfully in court that releasing the full documents would identify witnesses, law enforcement, and people not likely to be charged, thus damaging the investigation. President Trump responded on his social media platform, criticizing the document's heavy redactions and without evidence, accusing the Department of Justice and FBI of playing politics. Now, asked today whether he's worried that national security information could be in jeopardy, President Biden continued to distance himself from the investigation, saying he'll let the Department of Justice determine that. There has been a snag in repairs for that broken water main that caused a boil water advisory. The segment of replacement pipe that was just delivered yesterday was sent back to the manufacturer. The Great Lakes Water Authority says it did not meet specifications. That part, along with the rest of the replacement parts, will likely arrive Sunday. Crews aren't sure what this will do to the repair timeline, but the boil water advisory is no longer in place. All right, now to Eastern Michigan University, where there's trouble on the horizon as students began moving into their dorms today. Yeah, right now, the university and teachers are at odds over a contract, and the current one ends on Wednesday. Grant Harms, live tonight. Uh, do we have a chance of a strike looming, Grant? Well, that vote, Devin and Kimberly, could potentially happen this weekend. You know, classes start Monday. The contract, as you said, ends Wednesday. So there's a chance here that kids could start their semester without anyone to teach them. Faculty at Eastern Michigan University holding an informal protest as students moved in just days before classes start. Professors say they haven't had more than a contract extension since 2019. And this time, EMU administrators wanted to cut benefits after faculty asked for a 9% salary increase, one they say they're owed after years of extensions. After 10 rounds of negotiations, talks have stalled. When faculty are fighting for this, we're we're fighting for us, but we're also fighting benefit costs through the whole university. On the other side of the table, university officials calling the union's request expensive. I'd be hard pressed to find any uh, bargaining unit uh, at a university that's received a 9% salary increase. And I, I just think that that's uh, excessive and uh, hopefully uh, we can find ways to, uh, you know, to make a, a more realistic uh, proposal. For now, both sides hoping these talks come to an end before the bell rings. I'm really excited to see my, my students. Um, I'm excited to, to be back in the classroom and we just uh, we want a fair contract before uh, you know before the semester starts. Both sides are are extremely committed to working this out. Everybody has the the best interests of our students in mind and and uh, there is nothing that would get in the way um, of uh, achieving an agreement in the time that we have left. Now, state mediators had to be brought in to negotiate this, and they plan on continuing their talks through the weekend. That vote is set for tomorrow to kind of basically take the temperature of the union members here. We'll update you with that tomorrow after that vote happens on ClickOnDetroit.com and here on Local 4.
Back to you. Now, uh, the way, however, the vote goes, go Grant, it, a strike would not be triggered right away, right? Uh, that's right. Basically, the vote that'll happen tomorrow is just taking the temperature of all 500 members, whether they would be interested in striking or yeah. continuing the negotiations even as the semester starts. So that's the first step here, but we'll have that updated for you tomorrow. It'll be an important statement to make one way or the other. All right, Grant. Mm -hmm. Uh, now to the announcement that sent the markets into a tailspin today. In a speech, Federal Reserve Chair Jerome Powell said he expects the central bank will continue to raise interest rates to battle inflation. He also said those rate hikes will cause, quote, some pain to the U.S. economy. That news immediately sent stocks tumbling. At the close today, the Dow was down more than 1,000 points. We are often sliding on this Friday. <laughs> we are. Let's check in with Hank.